Welcome to lessons 10.2 and 10.3 for honors geometry. So today we're going to go over arc measures and properties of chords. And specifically today you're going to get a lot of terminology, so a lot of definitions and theorems and postulates with these two lessons. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go over some key terms about circles and specifically some arcs. So let's say we have circle C. A central angle in a circle is an angle whose vertex is on the center of the circle. So think of central and center. They kind of sound pretty similar there. A central angle has a vertex on the center of the circle. So if we were to draw angle ACB right here, this is a central angle. Its vertex is the same point as the center of this circle. Okay, so what are we going to do with this central angle? Why do we need to know it? Well, there are a couple of arcs associated with this angle. So a minor arc, and when we talk about arcs, we're talking about the part of a circle that's divided up by an angle. So we've got our central angle right here, and we've got two different arcs. We have this little arc here, and then we have a big arc that goes all the way around a circle. So a minor arc on a circle is an arc whose measure is less than 180 degrees. So we can clearly see that this arc right here made by angle ACB is a minor arc. This is definitely less than 180 degrees. And the way that we would write that arc is do kind of a little curved line and that would be arc AB. So arc AB is a minor arc. Now if we were to put point D on the circle, that's just for reference, we can now name a major arc. And a major arc is an arc on a circle whose measure is between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. So we have this big huge arc here. This is definitely greater than 300, or definitely greater than 180 degrees. That is a major arc. And the way that we would write that arc is it has to have three letters. Think of major being bigger. It has to have more letters. So this would be arc A, D, B. That's our major arc on this circle. We have another special type of arc, which is a semicircle. And that's just what you know. It's a semicircle. It's half a circle. But by definition, this is an arc on a circle whose measure is 180 degrees. It is exactly 180 degrees. Its endpoints are going to be a diameter. So if we were to draw a diameter SR, we have a semicircle SDR. And it's also going to be termed by three letters. So SDR is a semicircle. because its angle measure is 180 degrees. Okay, we have one last terminology I need to clear off here to go over. That's called adjacent arcs. Adjacent arcs are two arcs of the same circle, so they are in the same circle, that share an endpoint. So we have arc AS, and arc SB. These are adjacent arcs because they both share the semi or the endpoint S. These would be considered adjacent arcs. All right, so now that we have some of the key terms down, let's figure out what we're going to do with these terms and why we need to know them. And we're going to learn how to find the measure of arcs. So the measure of a minor arc is going to be its central angle measure. So if we know the angle measure of this angle right here, of angle ACB, we know the measure of arc AB. So we would write the measure of arc AB equals the measure of angle ACB. And this is how you would find the minor arc. The measure of the major arc is simply 360 degrees 
minus the measure of the minor arc. Because we know there are 360 degrees in a circle. So the major arc, and again if we had point D on here, so the measure of arc ADB equals 360 degrees minus the measure of arc AB. Lastly, we have a postulate. Postulate 23 is the arc addition postulate. And this postulate states that the measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measure of the two arcs. Okay, so now that we've clear, cleared off all of the writing that we had, let's say we have another arc rate or another angle here. And we're going to call this point D. If we wanted to find the measure of arc A, B, we could simply say that it's the measure of arc A, D plus the measure of arc D, B. It's going to be these two arcs added together. So that's what your arc addition postulate states that if they are adjacent arcs, and remember adjacent arcs have to share a common endpoint, then the measure of the arc made by those adjacent arcs is just simply the sum of those two arcs. All right, so now we're gonna move on to chords, and this is lesson 10.3. So remember, a chord is a segment whose endpoints are on a circle. We have a theorem that states that in the same circle, or in congruent circles, these would be circles that have the same diameter, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So what is the corresponding chord? Let's figure that out. So first we've got two sets of angles here. We've got angle ACB and angle DCE. So what this theorem is saying is that if we were to draw their chords, so let's go ahead and draw those in. So we've got chord AB and chord DE. If these two chords are congruent to each other, so AB is congruent to DE, then the measure of arc AB is also going to be congruent to the measure of arc DE. So that's what theorem 10.3 states. Now we're going to move on to a couple more theorems about chords. So we've got our circle. Theorem 10.4 states, if one chord is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then the first chord is a diameter. Okay, so what does that mean? So we've got two chords written here, chord AB and chord CD. What this is saying is that if chord A is the perpendicular bisector of CD, so it's perpendicular and it bisects chord CD, then AB has to be a diameter, no matter what. So if this line right here not only is perpendicular, but it divides it into two congruent segments, then it is a diameter. So that means that it would lie or it would go through the center of this circle. And we'll call this, label this the center. Also, we have a theorem 10.5, which is kind of like its converse a little bit. So if the diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its arc. So if we know that this is a diameter, and we know that it's perpendicular to a chord, then we know it not only bisects the chord, but it would bisect the arc. So that means that arc CB would be congruent to arc BD. All right, we have one last theorem here. So in the same circle, or in congruent circles, two chords are congruent 
if and only if they are equidistant from the center. So remember, what does it mean to be equidistant? That means that the distance, and we have to draw from our center of the circle, a line that is perpendicular to each chord. So if C, F is congruent to C, G, those are these two little segments right here, then we know that the chord B, A is congruent to chord D, E. And furthermore, from our previous theorems, we would know that arc B, A is also congruent to arc D, E. That's from our theorems from the previous slide. So this theorem definitely gives us a lot of information that we can learn about chords and their corresponding arcs. Okay, so I warned you, today was going to be just a lot of definitions and theorems and things like that, but let's actually go into one example here. So we need to find the value of x. We are given two different chords here, chord AB and chord DE, and we have these lines that are drawn perpendicular from the center of the circle. These are equidistant. So our theorem that we just went over states that if these segments right here are equidistant to two chords in the same circle, then we know that these two chords are congruent to each other. So this problem is pretty easy to solve. All we have to do now is since we know that AB is congruent to DE, chord AB is congruent to chord DE, set their lengths equal to each other. So 3x plus 2 equals 22. Solve for x. So we have subtract 2 from both sides. So we get 3x equals 20. x equals 20 over 3. And you have solved that problem. Okay, so that's it for today. Fairly short lesson. Again, I know it's a lot of terms and terminology, but once you guys actually put this into practice with the classwork, it'll make a lot more sense too, hopefully. Hope you have a great day and look forward to seeing you guys in class. Take care. Bye-bye.